Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Tom Wagner. And as you know, every month we strive to focus on a different department, some different roles and responsibilities of county government. And today we have a new face in front of us, Matt Grenoble, our new airport superintendent, airport manager. He goes by a number of good titles. Matt, welcome. Thank you. I think Matt started, has it been two, three months? How long has Five it been? Months. Five yeah. months. How time flies. Yeah. And I know Matt is really in the thick of things out at the airport. We were just meeting with Greg Schnell, our transportation director before this program, and, and Greg was sharing how busy Matt is, and again, a lot of good things happening, including preparations for the Ryder Cup and looking to improve upon the airport. So Matt, let's start with just sharing a little bit about yourself, uh, give our viewers a little flavor for who Matt Grenoble is. Yeah, so uh, I was born and raised in Virginia, uh, a little bit far from home, but uh, I've kind of been all bounced around all over the country. My initial career path was to be a commercial pilot. I um, worked my way up through the rankings, uh, got all my licenses and, and ratings uh, to pursue that career. I uh, got an undergraduate degree at Radford University in Virginia. Uh, and after college, got a job working for a company in Florida. Uh, I was flying, uh, uh, worked my way up to be a co-pilot in the Learjet. I started doing that for a little bit and realized that while I still love aviation, I uh, did not enjoy uh, the career aspect of being a pilot. It is a fantastic career, but it just wasn't for me. So I decided to go back to school, get a master's degree in uh, aviation safety and aviation management, and started down the path of airport management with the ultimate goal of being an airport manager. So that led me out west to an internship in Utah and working in uh, Washington State at a couple of different airports. And then uh, met my wife, we got married out there, and she's from Chicago. We wanted to move back closer to, to family before settling down and having kids. So uh, we've always got jobs out here in the area, the Milwaukee area. She works at uh, University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. And uh, I was working at Waukesha County Airport for the last six years until uh, October of last year. So, yeah. so Virginia, Chicago, we're, we're bringing good people to Sheboygan County. <laughs> Definitely. And I know. Uh, I first heard of you and your track record because of uh, Waukesha County and the excellent job they done they do running the airport there. Mm -hmm. And so we were so tickled to, to see you join us here in Sheboygan County. I can't believe it's been five months yeah, already. It's been a whirlwind. What's been your first impression of, of the Sheboygan County Memorial Airport and how would you describe it to, to folks? Uh, first impression is, uh, I mean, I've, I've known about the airport. I've visited the airport before I, I got the job. so. I always uh, saw it as a great little airport that I would potentially love to manage one day. And uh, so it's, it has a lot going on already and it has a tremendous a lot of uh, potential uh, for future growth. And uh, I have a fantastic team, fantastic leadership with the county. Uh, so it's been uh, really a great, uh, a great fit for me. So. And, you, and I get a kick of how you describe that, a great little airport, because in the grand scheme of things across the country, it is, it is a rather, rather small airport. but. We know it's pretty busy, pretty active. Uh, just what is the size and scope of the of the Sheboygan County Memorial Airport? Yeah, and actually we are considered a, a large general aviation airport. So that means we do not have any commercial services. It's all uh, private aircraft that come and go. It is a public use airport, it's open 24 um, seven. As far as size wise, we have about 760 acres. We have two runways, uh, one being 6,800 feet long uh, the secondary runway is 5,000 feet long. Have about 80 tenants on the field, um, and we do about 40,000 operations a year as a, a takeoffs and landings. Years ago, it used to be a standalone department, and just like many areas throughout Sheboygan County, we consolidated it as part of the transportation department. Obviously, you're a division of the of the transportation department, and, and a very important one. Uh, yet, you know. As you said, a strong staff, good staff, but a small division. Uh, give our viewers a, a flavor for the scope. How many staff do you have? What's your annual operating budget? So we have uh, three full-time staff, including myself, and we have one part-time uh, member. Yeah. Our budget is about $460,000 a year, um, and uh, we're taking about 200000 in tax levy. Yeah. And, and you may have reviewed a report more recently than I, but if memory serves, 
Uh, hasn't the state periodically done assessments or cost benefit reviews? And it's like for every dollar we put in, we get about 25 or 27 back to the local economy or something along it those lines. It sounds about right. They, uh, the number that I saw was $26 million economic impact of output uh, to the community. So it's, it's really significant. We support uh, over 80 jobs, you know, just at the airport alone. Um, so, you know, have tax levy from uh, our uh, taxes that are generated by our tenants. And uh, so we have a, a tremendous impact on the, the local community. And of that 400 and some thousand budget, I think about 200, 250 is property tax levy. So it's just a tremendous value for our community. Yeah. I mean, the economic impact obviously is huge and it's supporting some really successful companies. Correct. So, uh, Obviously, you and your staff don't do everything out there. We have a fixed-based operator. Yep. Describe the role of a fixed-based operator. So a fixed-based operator, you think of them like a, a full-service gas station for private aircraft. Yeah. They provide everything from uh, aircraft fuel. That's their, their big uh, the thing that they sell and provide. But they also provide services such as uh, rental cars, um, catering. They can coordinate catering service for, for aircraft that come and go. Um, they can provide overnight storage for um, for aircraft, either tie downs or, or in their heated hangars. Um, so they, uh, they really handle, they're kind of the face at the airport when someone comes and, and goes if they're not based at the airport. They uh, typically go uh, straight to the, the fixed based operator for services. So they uh, are a key partner with the airport um, in uh, providing those services. So they're providing direct services to folks who are flying in and out and the tenants there. And what would you say are the predominant responsibilities of you and your staff? Our responsibilities are the, uh, to ensure that the airport is safe, modern, and efficient um, for our air travelers and our, our customers and, and our tenants. Um, so safety is key, obviously, in ensuring that the, the airport is safe. Um, with our, our runways and taxiways are always safe and, and, and um, uh, well-maintained. It you know, ranges the, from snow removal to repairing fences to wildlife abatement. Exactly, you name it. It's, uh, we have to wear a lot of different hats, all of us at the airport, especially with such a small staff. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not un unlikely to see me out there in my, my gritty you know, clothes helping the guys out or something if, if I need be. So it's, uh, we definitely uh, have a, our hands full. <laughs> it's a good team and a 24-7 operation. Yeah. Just how busy is the airport? About how many flights are coming and going on a daily or weekly basis? The average uh, daily is around 200 uh, takeoffs and landings a day. In the wintertime, that's obviously less. In the summertime, it's, it's more. Right. So, but the average is about 200 per day. And it comes out to around 40,000, between 40 and 50,000 uh, takeoffs and landings yeah. a year. And that's quite a number. I, yeah. I've often thought that our airport, you know, some people I, I don't think have ever been out there. And uh, certainly a lot of people I think don't fully appreciate just how busy that little airport is, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. a lot going on out there. Yeah. Wonderful. What are you finding with uh, uh, wildlife abatement right now with deer or, or uh, turkeys, geese? I, I know from time to time you have to you have to take care of some problems out there. Yeah, exactly. We have a, a fence that surrounds the whole airport um, that help, really helps keep the deer out. Um, but sometimes they do make their way in one way or another if it's an, a, ga a gate that's left open or something. Um, but uh, the, the birds, obviously, it's hard to control. You know, stop them from coming. We have. Uh, employ a, a various number of, of tactics, um, habitat modification to try to eliminate the water sources for the, the waterfowl, especially the geese and the ducks. Um, but also a few years ago, the uh, airport acquired a system of uh, remote bird cannons is what they call them. It's propane powered, um, you know, gun that, that sounds, it, all it does is it make a sound, it sounds like a gun going off. And, uh, a uh, really fancy system, it works really well. Uh, if there's a flock of geese on the runway, uh, even the, the, the FBO has uh, the ability to uh, press the button and fire off these bird cannons and it scares the birds away. It's been a fantastic tool. Um, but then also our, the staff members have uh, pyrotechnics they can shoot at the, the wildlife to, to scare them off. Our, obviously our first uh, goal is to, to um, scare them off peacefully essentially. Um, right, right. Yeah, well, you and your team do an excellent job. I think over the last 20 years, it's been far and few between, but I know every now and then a deer needs to be taken out or you have to do something to, to make sure we protect the airplanes and, and most importantly, the people in them. Correct. So final question before I turn it over to Chairman Wagner. Give our viewers a flavor for the type of tenants that we have out there, you know, 
who, who's utilizing the airport and, and what's the breadth of that utilization? Yeah, so the heart and soul of the airport is really our, our small general aviation community. Um, you know, we have about 40 private hangars that house smaller, you know, piston and propeller driven aircraft. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of flight training at the airport as well. Uh, we have a, a great uh, uh, flying club, Sheboygan Flying Club, that provides flight training for, for new pilots. Um, but we also have uh, several industrial or commercial or um, um, uh, corporation, corporate tenants uh, mm -hmm. at the airport as well. Um, and uh, then we have two commercial operators, the, the FBO, a fixed-based operator, and as well as an aircraft uh, maintenance shop, mm -hmm. Airworthy Aviation. Yeah. And if you're not familiar with where the Sheboygan County Memorial Airport is, it's right off of TT, right, Highway 23 and TT, and, and it's, it's worth taking a look. It doesn't take long to drive through, but I think if you've never been out there, you're going to be impressed. Yeah, thank you, Matt. Nice thank overview. You. Tom. Thank you, Adam. Welcome, Matt. Thank you. Um, besides re being responsible for the upkeep and maintenance, you're also involved in some capital improvements out there. Mm -hmm. uh, where are you at with that? So some of the capital improvements uh, we've been having the last uh, um, few years, we had the last previous last uh, capital projects included a rehabilitation of our uh, taxiways, um, we had, or one of the taxiways, Taxiway Bravo, as well as the uh, rehabilitation of our main terminal ramp, last, which was completed last year. Uh, some of the pavement was reaching the end of its useful life, and so it was uh, rehabilitated. Obviously, we wanted to get that done before the Ryder Cup, so we expect a, a heavy load of traffic. Um, so that's, those are the last two projects we have this year. We have um, uh, starting a plane for connecting one of our taxiways, again, taxiway Bravo that parallels, uh, it par currently partially parallels one of our runways. Um, and right now the plan is to actually connect those two, so it's a full parallel taxiway. So we're going to start planning that project this year uh, and then start uh, construction next year on that. We're also going to be acquiring a new piece of snow removal equipment uh, this year. Uh, we have a, a current tractor that's it's, uh, reached a, the end of its useful life, and so we're looking to get a, another multi-use tractor that can be used during the wintertime for, for blowing the snow and also uh, brooming. It has a big broom on the front that I'll um, be able to utilize, but also using it in the summertime for, for mowing. Good. Because you can't use salt or other type of snow removal out there, right? Because when I fly commercially and I'm out at Mitchell or someplace like that, you never see anything like that. They're always just having the snow blow or whatever. I assume that would be we bad. Can, yep, Go ahead. Yeah, no, sorry. We, uh, we cannot use salt. Unfortunately, it is you know, inexpensive and, and effective. However, it's very corrosive. Uh, there are chemicals that um, are out there to use, and that's what we do use a, a liquid the ice chemical, we use it sparingly because of the, the expense on it, but if we need to use it, um, if it's really icy, it is very effective. Uh, so we do utilize that, but typically we use the plows, the, the snow broom, and the, the snow blowers to, to clear the, the runways and all the surfaces. Yeah, okay, thank you. Um, you talked about some of the recent improvements in that, and um, who has some of the oversight over, uh, who do you report, you report to Adam obviously, but right. who else do you engage with as far as that? Yeah, so we have a, a, an airport advisory committee and it's made up uh, primarily of airport tenants but also local um, community leaders. Uh, and what we meet and, and discuss, uh, you know, we'll talk about any future projects or current projects or any issues going on um, and update the committee on that and then we uh, it gives them a, a great opportunity to give us the feedback uh, on any of the issues or concerns they may have. Um, when it comes to planning any projects, uh, you know, we really rely heavily on the committee and then all of our community as a whole to give us the feedback for, to help us with planning this. That we, you know, we're, since we're all in this together, you know, we want to make sure that it, uh, we, we see, uh, address everyone's needs. So that committee is, is really highly valuable for us. And then we also report to the transportation committee and they're responsible for setting the airport policy. They also uh, approve our, our leases, uh, provide recommendations on air, airport leases, uh, approve the budget every year, um, and uh, uh, any ordinances that we may have to put forward. Right, and yeah, this will be your first year in the budget then that we're already starting. We kind of do budget year round now, I think almost, <laughs> you know, everybody's thinking ahead. So you talked about some of the more recent improvements completed at the airport. What do you think uh, in the next five years that you're going to be looking at, if you could share some of that? Yeah, um, 
the uh, and one of the big large improvements I uh, didn't touch base yet on it's a big one it's a customs uh, project that's going on right now um, but then uh, also we the um, after the the taxiway uh, connection of taxiway Bravo uh, and the equipment acquisition you know I've been told that we we don't have any major projects in the in the work so that's going to be a big part of my job now is to, to start planning that next five to ten years out um, you know, I already have some some projects in mind that you know we have some drainage is issues on the airfield um, that very well could turn into a large capital project and to, to again modify that habitat to avoid uh, uh, to mitigate wildlife coming in so um, I'm walking in a little bit with a, a, a blank slate you know uh, in a sense once we get these next couple projects out of the way um, which is really exciting for me could you talk a little more about the customs and the welcome center because yeah. that's a big project for yep. Sheboygan County. Yeah, so the customs and uh, general aviation uh, terminal facility, it's going to be a uh, joint facility. So one half of the building will be for U.S. customs to uh, aircraft flying from overseas can, can fly directly into the airport and clear customs there, here. Um, and then the other half of the building will be uh, uh, for airport administration. And then there'll be a, a part that's a general um, you know, basically used for general aviation traffic that uh, uh, may need just to come in. If they don't require any services from, from an FBO, they don't need any fuel, they can just come into that facility, use the restroom, do some flight planning, um, and uh, go on that way. Um, it began construction in December. Uh, I was looking to, to open, um, be wrapping up in June and hoping to open by August 1st and then obviously be in full operations by uh, the Ryder Cup. Right, and the Kohler Company is, of course, supporting the county and especially in the customs area with some financial support Correct. Yes. over the years, which makes a difference. And correct me if I'm wrong, but because uh, I've talked to some people on this, uh, there isn't going to be customs out there. There aren't going to be staff 24-7 out there waiting for the planes to come in, right? Correct. It'll be, they'll have set hours. We haven't fully set those hours yet, but they will be basically 40 hours a week, um, Monday through Friday. But they will be available to come out um, on the weekends if, somebody calls ahead of time and sets it up. Yeah, kind of on call, right? Correct. Yeah, good. Um, so you talked a little bit about the economic benefits of the airport, $26, 27000000 million. Can you give any specific relative to that? Obviously, it generates a lot of money, the income, uh, the taxes that the people who work there all generate. Anything else you want to share with that? Uh, yeah, the, I mean, the, the fuel sales generate uh, revenue uh, to, from our base tenants, but also that the aircraft, the transit aircraft that come in, they uh, come in and usually fuel up, generating revenue. Um, the, we have the, the leases, the ground, the anyone that builds a hangar at our airport, they lease the land from us and they, they build the hangar, you know, with their own funding. Um, but so we get that, that uh, 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 lease revenue um, on an annual basis. Um, but also the, uh, um, uh, we're a great spot for training the next generation of pilots. You know, we have a, a terrible pilot shortage uh, in the uh, in the industry, and so um, having a, a place for flight trainers is really important. Um, and also medical flights, we get uh, you know med medical flights sure. and medical emergency flight for life, you know timely flies in law enforcement flights. So I mean the, the um, airport can uh, is a huge benefit to the community. Yeah, thank yeah. you. I think that one of the things you said that I think will stand out to people who aren't that familiar with the airport is uh, 200 landings and takeoffs a day. I think that can, that's a shocking number to, to a lot of people that yeah. it's that busy, right? Yeah. I mean, that tells you something. Yeah. So thanks, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. As, as our viewers get a flavor for all the things that happen at the airport, you know, what I have found remarkable over the years is just all the growth, all the infrastructure, all the investment. And it's been one of the better uh, collaborative opportunities we've had because generally speaking, for every ten dollars we put in we get 90 or thereabouts from the state I mean yeah. it's really been a good relationship touch on that a little bit how does that work yeah uh, some projects are are eligible for uh, federal funding uh, depending on the, the size scope location of the project uh, the federal the FAA uh, for these larger capital projects will chip in 90 percent of the, pro the project and then the state will chip in an extra five percent leave in only five percent for for the county to pick up which is a an amazing deal. Amazing. So if it's uh, not funded by the, if it's not a federally eligible project, uh, it could be eligible through a state as well. You know, we could get a 50-50 split with the state or an 80%, 20% split. Um, or some projects um, are even funded 100% by the state. They've been fantastic uh, partners. We've been really lucky to have a great 
state Bureau of Aeronautics, and as well as the Federal Aviation Administration's uh, offices nearby. So, and the Bureau um, of Aeronautics is part of the State Department of Transportation, who correct. not only is helping us make good things happen at the airport, but yep. it's now expanding Highway 23, and and the county board invested the half percent sales tax into our transportation system so we can more fiscally responsibly maintain our transportation system, sustainable revenue source. I mean, when, you, when we talk about the area of transportation in Sheboygan County of our 19 departments, right now I, I would have to say this is one of our strongest areas of sustainability yeah. because of the good relationships we have with the state as well as the fact that the, the board's really made an investment to make sure we're taking care of our transportation system. It's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. It's wonderful. And I, I think you're going to bring tremendous vision and new energy to our airport, continue to improve upon it, and back to the customs facility. I mean, there again is another example. Tom and I both heard some people in the community say, well, how much is the county spending on that? <laughs> and here the state is picking up half the cost. Yep. Kohler Company is picking up the operational costs of the U.S. Custom Facility with user fees and time to cover that. Yep. And staff like you are getting, finally, a really nice area to, to report to because, of course, the air, your office and where your staff are currently in, that's a pretty tired space. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah so n nice work with that. Thank you. We just came from a meeting uh, talking about the rider. And little do people know in this community all the behind the scenes yeah. planning that goes into the Ryder Cup coming up here in September. You talked about the customs facility needing to be up and running by the Ryder Cup. We seem to hear that a lot. Share with our viewers some of the initiatives, some of the planning that you're part of to prepare for the Ryder Cup. Yeah, there's a, a lot of moving pieces. You know, we've been working with a lot of different entities as are everyone else, you know, as part of this uh, whole event. Uh, we've been working very closely with the Bureau of Aeronautics as well as the FAA. Um, you know, obviously we're going to have uh, a very large increase in, in traffic that week. Right. Um, and normally we're not a controlled airport. We do not have a controlled tower. However, that week we expect to have so much traffic, we are getting a temporary control tower um, and to the, to the airport. And it's, uh, same thing happened for the previous uh, PGA events. And so um, it's nice we have a, a, a good template already uh, for how that operates and parking plans and such. So it's just uh, working with uh, uh, those two entities as well as all of our local partners, our, our uh, you know, the FBO, you know, it's really important that we work closely with them on, you know, parking plans. And um, so it's, uh, and then now we have this new piece of the puzzle, the, the uh, customs facility. Uh, so it's, um, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot going on, but you know, that everyone has been ready and willing to jump in and, and uh, help out where needed. It's, it's been a really good planning process so far. You're even going to have helicopters coming and going, aren't you? Yes, yeah, that's the, the plan. Uh, seeing quite a bit of helicopter traffic that'll be, uh, uh, people can fly into to the airport at Sheboygan and then the, uh, take a helicopter directly from the airport to the, the, uh, the golf course. So we're going to be working out the logistics with them shortly. Yeah. And to your point earlier, we do get some revenue from fuel sales. Obviously, that helps immensely the the um, the main provider, the FBO. Yeah. But we get some revenue as well, and the more revenue we get from fuel sales or for tenants leases, the less pressure we put on the property taxpayer, which is a good thing. Exactly. Yeah. I, I know I can speak if you don't mind for, the, for the county board. What we like is especially those 90% uh, federal support, 10% yeah. or 95, uh, counting the state in there, 5% levy. Those are uh, those are a wonderful relationship. We'd just love to expand it to other areas, but we understand that's yeah. what works. Yeah, exactly. It's definitely uh, really great. Yes, that we have with them. You also touched earlier that touched on earlier the you know the security at the airport, and of course. That's an area over the last decade that has gotten so much attention, whether, whether it's the airport, whether it's the security enhancements we recently put in our courthouse. Mm -hmm. Please touch on what are some of the security, what kind of security is at the airport now, and where do you see that being further enhanced in the future? We have a, a perimeter fence, like I said earlier, on that surrounds the whole airport, and most of that, that uh, perimeter fence has uh, barbed, wire fence, barbed wire at the top as well. Uh, and we have vehicle gates, all of our, our access gates are locked. Uh, most of them are uh, locked with you know, padlock, but then we have uh, quite a few that are also automated gates that uh, you need 
uh, a key fob or a card to, to gain access through. Uh, we maintain that system, uh, so if, if anyone, tenants or employees, anyone needs uh, access, they, they come to us to get uh, uh, that key fob and we enter into a system um, and give that to them. Uh, we also have cameras that are uh, you know, stationed at the gates and uh, other various parts of the airport and part of the, the, uh, the customs project is to upgrade that camera system. Um, some of those cameras again are aging uh, and in need of replacement, so that's uh, that's another big part of the the project is upgrading that system. Yeah. yeah. And and finally, in the last few minutes we have, and this may be the one event that people do recognize when it comes to our Memorial Airport, and that's the Wings and Wheels event. And yeah. I know, Matt, this is a little unfair for you because you <laughs> haven't been here for that yet, but yeah. certainly you'll be a part of that planning coming this summer. Um, what can you share about Wings and Wheels and that upcoming activity, and what is it all about? Yeah, Wings and Wheels is a fantastic event held every year. It's put on by the, the local chapter of the EAA. Um, it is a free event. Uh, it's on Father's Day every single year. Um, they, uh, they, it features at least 70, I think over 70 vintage cars, as well as over 30 vintage aircraft. Um, there's a pancake breakfast in the morning, and uh, uh, from what I understand, they, they also have uh, model trains and, and also helicopter rides. So it's a absolutely Fantastic family event. Um, definitely plan to bring my whole family out to, to attend and really looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to working with the, e, the EAA chapter on, on planning. And so I've been to some events out there and it always is amazing how many people from the community come out for that event. It's really well done. Yeah. The Aviation Heritage Center, I think, also supports that. Correct. They have a nice building there. Uh, what have you learned about the Aviation Heritage Center and, and how does that further add to the value of our airport. Yeah, they're a great organization. We've been working very closely with them, obviously with the, the customs pro building going up right next to them. We, uh, uh, that has some, you know, some, some good impacts to them, but we've been working with hand in hand with them on, on the project, um, as well as any other events going on at the airport. So they've been great partners. Uh, we get people that fly in um, just to come to the, to the Heritage Center. Um, so it, it is an absolutely great uh, resource at the airport. And not every port, airport has something like this, so right. it's, it's really a gem. Um, I, I like the history component that it shares, the background there, as well as I think they rent out their facility they for do. special events. Yes, do they, they not, do, right? yep. Yeah, so if you're looking for a venue or a, a public meeting or, or even a, a family reunion or a, I don't know if a they wedding. do. A yeah, wedding, they have did, weddings, yeah. Yeah, they have certain limitations on, on how many people they can hold out there, but it's a nice venue. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Well, Matt, thank you so much for your time. You covered a lot of ground in 30 minutes. If you have any questions for Matt or anything on our transportation system, certainly don't hesitate to stop out at the airport. Don't hesitate to contact your county board supervisor or Chairman Tom Wagner or myself. Always glad to talk about transportation issues or areas where we can improve Matt, we're glad to have you aboard. Thank you. I'm glad to be aboard. Yeah, it's, it's just a pleasure to get to know you better, and I can't believe how the time's flying. So yeah. thanks again. Next month, we're going to turn the chairs a little bit here, and the gentleman to my left, your right, is going to be in the hot seat. <laughs> Chairman Tom Wagner is going to be completing his fourth year as our county board chair, and by county board rule ordinance, you can only serve two consecutive terms. So. Tom's going to be moving on as county board chair. We're glad he's going to continue with the county board as a whole, but we're going to talk a little bit about the last four years and the really good initiatives, improvements that happened during Chairman Wagner's term. So I hope you'll join us. Until then, stay warm, stay safe, and we'll see you in a month.